Everybody, welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. If you are right now growing your plants, if you are growing your seeds for spring, you should also be growing the following plants to companion plant with those other plants that you're planting. <laughs> the reason for that is, is you want a companion plant with plants that will bring in the beneficial insects that will kill all those pests. So let's talk about that. I read a statistic in this book right here that kind of shocked me and blew my mind. Out of the 1.5 million species of insects, only about 3% are destructive. Now, if you really think about that, that that's kind of mind blowing, right? Because if you go outside, there's insects everywhere and you're just bombarded by insects, but only 3% are actually destructive. That means there's 97% that aren't. And out of those 97%, there's a lot of insects that will eat and destroy the destructive <laughs> insects. Let's talk about those. All right, right off the bat, let's talk about aphids. Now, if you have been growing anything in the garden for any amount of time, you know what aphids are, those little punks that are all over your okra and other plants. And once you get them, you kind of got them. Super annoying and they breed and multiply like, I don't know, gremlins. They're nuts once you get those things. But there are plants that you can plant around certain crops that attract aphids to those crops that will bring in beneficial insects to actually eat the aphids. For me, I plant a lot of okra in the summer and I get aphids all across the okra. Now they don't normally stump my okra to where I, I don't grow. I actually get so much okra, I don't know what to do with all of it. Even with canning and everything else, I, I get a lot of okra, even with the aphids. But if you're planting a crop that is going to attract aphids, plant some of these companion plants around those other plants. Plant carrots, dill, and fennel. Now you're gonna want those to go to flower. So if you're planting carrots that you plan to harvest, don't. <laughs> Throw in some carrots that you're just gonna leave alone and let go to flower. Those three crops will bring in parasitic wasps and ladybugs. And believe me, you want ladybugs all over the place when you have an aphid issue. Now, this little creepy looking thing right here is actually a, a larva of a ladybug. Even though it looks like, kind of like an alligator crawling across your plants, if you see those, leave them alone, let them do their thing because they are devouring those aphids. So again, carrots, dill, and fennel will attract parasitic wasps and ladybugs to help attack aphids. Striped or spotted cucumber beetles. These little punks I actually have all around my garden. I've, actually, I've killed a few already this year and we're only in the middle of March. So they're out there. These little now, punks like to eat on squash, cucumbers, melons, any of the Corbett family. And once you get them, you kind of got them. Again, once you get these pests, you have them. So the best thing to do is deter them from even coming to your garden. But if they're gonna show up, again, this is why we're planting certain plants throughout the garden. And to get rid of these guys, this is what you wanna plant. Marigolds help deter this beetle from being in the garden. That's another reason I have so many marigolds around this garden, along with everything else that I grow. But I have a lot of marigolds. One, because I love how pretty they are, just add a different color palette to the, to the garden. But two, they, they help deter the striped and spotted cucumber beetle. Now with marigolds, you're also creating low-lying cover for other insects, such as a wolf spider, which will feed on these things, these little cucumber beetles. And don't be afraid of a wolf spider. Those things don't care about us. They, they are looking for beetles and things that they can eat in the garden. They do not care about us. So if you see them, you know, here's an example of one. I know they look freaky, I mean they're spiders and they'll be running across the ground, but leave them alone, let them do their thing, I'm telling you. The more spiders you have in a garden, the less pests you're going to have. So for me, even though I'm not a big fan of spiders, they don't bother me that much. But at the same time, yeah, I'm not going to get near them and you know, pet them, they, they, they can stay away. You know what I'm saying? They are doing their job. So my advice, if you're gardening, you want them in the garden, so just be cognizant of them and just let them do their thing. They will get rid of these little punks along with the marigolds. One more thing on these these beetles right here is plant a trap crop. Basically a crop you don't really care about but it will attract pests 
to that crop, leaving the other crops alone. So right now I have Blue Hubbard squash growing right over there, and I'm literally only growing it for this reason. So marigolds and trap crops for these beetles right here. Okay, flea beetles. Now I've only had these guys one time, knock on wood, and I got rid of them pretty quick. They were attacking the brassicas that I, that I was growing a few years ago or a couple years ago. And once I got rid of the brassicas, those things were gone. But if you do get hit by these little guys, uh, you know, there are a few things you can do. Again, trap crop is another way you can isolate flea beetles to where they're not attacking, you know, your important crops. And radishes. Now, flea beetles usually will hit or attack your the nightshade family. So that's peppers, tomatoes, uh, eggplants, and potatoes. Again, I plant a lot of peppers and I plant a lot of tomatoes and I've only ever really been hit by these guys once and again that was on the brassicas but it doesn't mean that they won't show up so what you can do is again trap crop or plant radishes now I always harp on companion planting especially when you're talking about for your tomato beds radishes are again another one of those companion plants that are great for tomatoes so and I plant a lot of radishes, so maybe that's why I don't have a, a flea beetle issue. But if you get hit by them, or you have a history of being hit by these guys, plant a lot of radishes and let them go to flower. As long as your radishes flower, they are going to bring in the beneficial insects to help kill these little jumping punks. <laughs> Trust me. And I will show you an example of a wasabi radish that I have let just do its thing and it survived the winter check this beast out <laughs> okay so right in there is the wasabi radish itself but look at all this growth coming up this thing and then at the top look at all those flowers now that is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm say let these crops go to flower one that's pretty and two it's super beneficial for your garden okay I'm sure we've all had this one squash bugs those little dudes they look like this right here I don't like them one, when I find them, they're always attacking something. I know that's their job, I get it. But again, like when you find certain insects, they're just kind of hanging out, looking around. Every time I see these little guys, they're just destroying something. So I hate them, hate them, hate them. A warm, soapy bath grave is what I like to just slap them into, but you can't catch them all. So plant so dill and parsley. Let them go to flower, and again, they will bring in the beneficial insects to kill these little punks. Or you can lay out cardboard somewhere in your garden overnight. When you check them the next morning, a lot of times those little guys will be either on or under that cardboard. Lift up the cardboard and introduce them to their soapy, loving embrace of death. <laughs> Just get rid of them. Again, dill and parsley are the plants you want to plant to again bring in the insects to kill these guys. Trust me, I hate them. Okay, now this next one is one of my absolute all-time favorite insects to hate. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I hate the vine borers. Hate them. Hate them, hate them. Now, I have a way of getting rid or keeping them away from your squashes and your melons, and I'll put that link to that video right here. But if you're going to plant a crop, bring in the parasitic wasps to kill these guys, these are the crops you want to plant all around your, your squashes, your zucchinis, your melons. Those crops are sweet alyssum, dill, and fennel. Again, let them all go to flower and just sit back and watch all the parasitic wasps come in and do their thing. Now, what you're looking for is this little punk right here. If you see this moth, You've got an issue because that moth is the one that lays the eggs for the vine borers. And the eggs are these little red spots, the stalk of the plant, like you're seeing right here. If you have them, you can pinch them with tweezers. You can pop them between your fingernails, but you're not going to catch them all. That, that's the thing. Now, there's a million ways to get rid of these guys. You can inject BT into the bottom part of the stem of that plant. That way, once the vine borer gets in there, it's gonna die. That's a lot of work. So again, plant dill, sweet alyssum, and fennel all over the place and just have 
a lot of that around all over your garden. You can get rid of the vine borers by planting companion plants. The next insect I want to hit right here are leaf miners. Now you'll see these a lot in, I see them a lot in my pepper plants, cucumber plants, things of that nature. And what you're looking for is like an example right here. You're going to get all these little squiggly lines across your, your leaves. And what it is is that little insect is between the two layers of the leaf in, bet in between doing its thing, creating its own little highway. So neem oil is not going to work on these guys. What you want to do is plant dill, sweet alyssum, and yarrow because you want to attract parasitic wasps. Those guys can find these little leaf miners, implant their eggs into them through the layer of the, of the leaf, and kill them. So the more dill, sweet alyssum, or lysum, I'm always not sure how to say that, I think it's alyssum, and yarrow that you can plant, the better your garden is going to be. Trust me, these guys are a pain, and I get them all the time, but they've never really affected my crops to where they don't survive. But again, let's just not have them, right? <laughs> the last one I'm gonna hit on is, of course, the tomato hornworm. Um, this punk is a punk. Like when he shows up, it's pretty much dire time to really get rid of them. You know, you can, if you get them, you can get rid of them with a black light at night. They glow. Here's a picture of how they look in the black light. But to avoid even getting these guys, in my opinion, I think we should try avoiding getting them. In other words, just creating a forge field all around your garden just to keep all these pests out naturally. Now, if you get them, what you want to do is you want to already have a lot of these plants already growing and having the parasitic wasps around because once those guys find these caterpillars, this is what happens to them. As you can see, all those white little egg looking things are actually eggs of the parasitic wasp. Once they hatch, they burrow into the tomato hornworm and eat it from the inside out. Now, that's graphic, that's crazy, but that's nature. And it's the natural way to get rid of these guys. But if you get them, by the time all that happens, that hornworm, all that thing does is eat and eat and eat. And it is going to destroy your tomato plant. So plant the following crops to ensure that you've got parasitic wasps everywhere. Carrots, celery, dill, fennel, let them all go to flower. Also radishes, onions, and basil. Now the basil will bring in a lot, but it creates the smell to hide your tomato plants from this moth right here, another little punk. But that one is the one that lays the eggs for the tomato hornworm. So plant as much basil as you can all over your garden. Just make your entire backyard invisible to that but if it gets right in have all those other plants that i just mentioned planted growing to flower to ensure you have parasitic wasps everywhere and your tomato plants are safe now i've been saying a lot about parasitic wasps and if you're new to gardening that might be freaking you out these are not the big red ones that are going to sting you or or anything like that these are really tiny little wasps i'll put some pictures of them up right here that don't care about us they are looking for their meal. And their meals are all of these insects that I've just listed off. So if you see a bunch of weird things flying around your garden, you're not quite sure what they are, more than likely, if you have all of these crops planted in your garden, you've got parasitic wasps everywhere, along with hoverflies and, and all the beneficial fly lace wings, all the beneficial insects that you want and that you need in your garden. But don't be afraid because I said wasps. They're not the ones that we're thinking of, I promise. Everyone, so that's the video. Now you'll notice one thing throughout this, this video and pretty much everything I was saying, if you plant the same type of crops throughout your garden, you're going to have such an army of beneficial insects to attack and prey upon those pests, just like nature intended. So again, plant dill, fennel, sweet alyssum, yarrow, parsley, carrots, radishes, let them go to flower, marigolds. Let them go to flower, and I promise you, you are going to have such a strong, beneficial insect game in your garden that you very well might not have very many pests. And y'all, that 
is a win and the goal. Everybody, I hope this video is educational. I hope you learned something from it. I learned more from it by researching this topic again, even though I've read this, this book right here many times. But every time I read it, I'm learning more stuff and I'm remembering more stuff. And once you're in the garden and you're encountering all these little punks and these pests and all these issues, it starts to actually stick. So again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, do me a favor, as always, like the video, share the video, and subscribe to this channel if you're not done so already. I would absolutely love to have all of you join all of us on this continued journey of gardening. Everyone take care. God bless. And as always, I'll talk to you again real soon.